Hi there, I'm here today to talk to you about the demographic transition model. The demographic transition model basically shows how changing birth rates and death rates can affect population growth. So let's get straight into the model, shall we? So stage one. So stage one is this first stage on the left-hand side. Now there are a couple of lines that we need to take account for that are, that are occurring on this graph. So we've got our blue line. So our blue line represents birth rate. So that's this blue line that moves through here. We've got a green line and this represents death rate that moves through here. And we've also got this total population line in orange that moves through here. So the key thing that you need to understand with regards to this is that as we move along this time axis along the bottom, so as we move along this time axis, countries become more developed. Okay, so the development index of a country or how developed a country is, which we measure tend to, which we tend to measure in something like HDI, for example, which I will use for this case to do, for case of this with regards to the DTM. Um, so as we move through the stages, a country becomes more developed. That's a key understanding that you have to have. So if we have a think about stage one, then. so stage one is the least developed because it's on the left-hand side of this graph. So therefore, as we can see, both birth rates and death rates are very, very high. Birth rates and death rates are very, very high. And this is due to things such as a lack of contraception. People are having lots of children because uh, there's poor health care, which means that infant mortality is very high. And also in terms of the death rate, being very high as a result of, of poor health care or due to famine or due to low life expectancy um, and also due to a very, very low income due to the lack of jobs within this stage one area. So stage one is characterised by, by those characteristics and as we can see we've got a very high birth rate and a high death rate. And because both the birth rate and the death rate are very similar to one another, we don't get any real increase or change in population. So we get a very low and steady population growth. In terms of case study wise, um, there aren't any whole countries that are that are within stage one at present anymore. They've all developed and moved through stage one. But we can identify single tribes, for example, that live in Brazil that you could associate to being within stage one. So in terms of case studies, you'd be looking at potentially tribes um, in the Amazon for case studies uh, for stage one. Now, stage two, the key thing with stage two is a rapid decline in the death rate. So we get a rapid decline in the death rate. Um, this tends to be as a result of improved health care or improved diet. And so therefore we get something called the life expectancy. The life expectancy, how long you expect someone to live, begins to increase. Now in terms of the birth rates, the key thing to understand about the birth rate is due to the economy. So the economy at this stage tends to be heavily agricultural. Because again, as we begin to develop a country, the type of economy tends to change, as you probably already know. Um, so at this stage, stage two, we tend to get a heavy predominance of, of agriculture that dominates the economy, uh, economic sectors. Um, so therefore, people have lots of children uh, to work on the farms. And therefore, because you need lots of children to work on the farms and support your family, the birth rates tend to maintain uh, at a high level. So because you've got this key difference between the birth rate and the death rate, the birth rate is much higher than the death rate, you get an increase in population because more people are being born than are dying. So you get this increase in population that you can see throughout stage two on the total population curve. In terms of case studies, we're looking at poorly developed countries, less developed countries at present. So case study wise, you would probably be looking at somewhere like, uh, sorry, let's just do it all in black, shall we? So it's a bit easy for you to follow. Um, somewhere like Gambia, for example. And in terms of a HDI index, as I say, which is how we measure development, its HDI index is around about 0.4 at present. So stage three. Stage three, we see a continued slight decline in death rates. So we see a slight decline in death rates. This is as a result of many things. So first, you might have a change in the economy. So you'd move from agriculture towards a manufacturing base, and that increases incomes, and therefore people have fewer children. Um, fewer children are, need, not, are needed to work on farms, etc., because we've got this change in economy, and therefore there are fewer children needed to be born. Healthcare also continues to improve to so get developed within hospitals and surgeries and, and medication, etc. So therefore the life expectancy increases again. In terms of the birth rate, uh, the Two main changes that occur within stage three are the introduction of contraception. Okay, so the introduction of contraception, which obviously limits the number of children that are born. And second, you get the emancipation of women. More women go out to work um, instead of having children. Um, so therefore, we get, we get a, a natural decline in the number of children that are being born. 
In terms of case studies, um, we're looking at countries that could probably be classified as NEEs, um, kind of industrialising, developing countries, such as, for example, uh, India. So India would be a good case study to use um, for stage three, and they have a HDI index of around about 0 0.6. <clears throat> so stage four. Now stage four, um, we see both a very low birth rate and a very low death rate. So if we focus on the blue line, we've got a slight fluctuations within the blue line, which is the birth rate, but it maintains at a pretty steady level. <clears throat> and we see the same thing with death rate. So the death rate does fluctuate, but it maintains at a pretty steady low level. So because we've got no change or no big difference, like we've got in stage two and stage three in terms of death rate and birth rates, the population starts to level out. The population doesn't increase or decrease. It starts to move towards a steady rate. So why might this happen? Well, they're very, very developed countries. The birth rates are very low because people want possessions. They want high quality of life. Um, they may have uh, dependent elderly relatives. You've got a, an aging population, so people need to spend their money to care for their parents or their grandparents, etc. And because of all these, there's essentially less money available um, for families to spend on, on having children. So in terms of the death rate, uh, healthcare, again, you get continued healthcare improvements. So the healthcare is very, very good. So therefore, you get a low death rate through things such as illness. Um, and therefore, the life expectancy is very, very high. In terms of income, so income is very, very high um, on, on average in comparison to, to the rest of the world. Sorry. So income is, is, is high in these countries, in these developed nations. Um, and therefore, people can spend money on, on healthcare and on maintaining a kind of a healthy, healthy lifestyle and a healthy body. So in terms of case studies, um, best case study would probably be here in the UK. So the UK would be a good case study for stage four. Um, and the UK have a HDI index of around about 0 0.8. So more developed than the countries in previous stages. So if we move through now to stage five, the final stage, now you can see we've got dotted lines on this map, and these are projections. So these are projections uh, based on what we think will happen as we move into stage five. Now, we have arguably actually got countries that have moved into stage five, and these countries include uh, Italy, for example, or maybe somewhere like Japan. And this is essentially where we can start to get a decline in population. The population starts to decline. And we can see that on this orange line, we get a decline in population. And that's essentially because the death rate increases above the birth rate. And that's as a result of those factors that I've just been through already as to why the birth rates were low in stage four. You get a high quality of life. People have less money to spend on children. People have less time available to raise children because they're so committed to work lifestyles um, and, and other life commitments. We also get an increase in the aged uh, population, the elderly population. Okay, We get an aging population because of an increase in and better health care. So we get further developments in health care, better treatment for the elderly population, and therefore people naturally live longer. So because of that, so we've got a decline in birth rate, so people don't want as many children, don't need as many children, haven't got as, many, as much time to have and raise children, but at the same time, we get people that are living longer. So the death rate starts to decline, the birth rate, uh, sorry, apologies, other way around, sorry, the death rate maintains at a steady rate or increases slightly, but the birth rate declines, the birth rate doesn't increase, it doesn't respond to this death rate, so we get a decline in birth rate. So therefore, as we say, population starts to decline. Case study wise, Italy and Japan would be good for this. Um, and in terms of HDI index, HDI index is, is relatively similar actually to the UK. You don't get much of a change. Um, it's just a natural progression as you move from stage four through to stage five. So that's the demographic transition model. I hope this video has helped.